Hello everyone, I am Bella. I'm your elected Disabled Students Part-Time Officer at DSU this year. Um, and I'm here with Meve for a short interview to introduce you to the well-being services and how it functions. Um, so yeah, could you please introduce yourself, um, your pronouns, your job role? Um, hi everyone, my name is Meve. I'm a well-being advisor at the university. Um, my pronouns are she, her. Um, yeah, so I'm a wellbeing advisor, so um, I work to support students who are um, experiencing ongoing difficulties with their wellbeing and their mental health um, and to link them in with support throughout their time at university. Hmm. So how did you become a wellbeing advisor and how long have you worked for Goldsmiths? Um, so I'd say it started, um, basically, I was a student at Goldsmiths, um, so I was a student for three years. Um, whilst I was at Goldsmiths, I actually accessed wellbeing support myself um, and accessed counselling as well. So it's something that I felt quite strongly about um, in terms of ensuring that students were getting a good level of support. Um, after I graduated, I worked in the domestic violence sector for a while. Um, and then I um, was employed by Goldsmiths as a campus support officer for a year. Um, and then I moved on to the wellbeing team. Hmm. So could you tell us a bit about what, what does a wellbeing advisor do? Um, yeah, sure. So uh, we have meetings with students to discuss um, ongoing difficulties that they may be experiencing um, in a number of areas across their life. Um, so it can be things such as academic pressure, it can be mental health issues, um, it can be difficulties with relationship, um, it can be physical health issues. If there's anything that's um, affecting your well-being and you'd like extra support with, um, we would meet with you, have a chat about what's going on. Uh, we can link you in with some more specialist support or with some um, external support providers. Uh, we can link you in with counselling. Um, and other networks within the university. And we can also arrange to have regular check-ins just to see how you're doing, um, if there's any questions that you have or any um, support you need with referrals um, or queries, we can also help with that as well. And as you just mentioned counselling as well, um, could you tell us what the difference is between counsellors and um, wellbeing advisors? Yeah, so, um, the counselling team is comprised of uh, trained counsellors and trained therapists. So um, when you're referred to counselling, you can um, partake in counselling and therapy sessions. Um, the wellbeing team are not trained counsellors or therapists. We're more here to link you in with more specialist support such as counselling um, and also just to provide pastoral support, emotional support but um, we're not trained therapists, so we can't provide therapy. Hmm. And what would you say to students who may be reluctant to use the wellbeing services? Um, I would just reassure them that it's a confidential space. Um, we're all very open, non-judgmental um, workers who have a lot of experience in mental health. A lot of us have been students ourselves and have also attended um, Goldsmiths, so we can definitely relate to a lot of issues that students are experiencing. Um, I know obviously it can be really daunting, um, especially when it's your first time accessing support. We're trying to navigate a lot of issues at the same time, um, but we're all in this role because we really care about supporting you and we want to help you um, and we want to make that process as smooth as it can be. Um, so please do reach out, or if you don't feel comfortable reaching out yourself, you can always um, maybe ask a friend or um, a staff member to contact us on your behalf and we can um, contact you first. Um, we're also offering support in a few different ways, which um, we'll talk about a bit later, but um, we like to make sure everything's as accessible as possible for everyone. Um, we're always happy to make adjustments if there's any that you need. Um, so just let us know. That's really good to know. Um, and what kind of things do the wellbeing services help students with? 
Um, so we help with a range of issues, um, very wide range. Um, they can be from things such as substance misuse, um, domestic abuse and abusive relationships, uh, general well-being and mental health, um, or more complex mental health issues, um, academic um, pressures or difficulties with the academic side of things. So we can arrange meetings with your department. We can help you with um, applications for things such as extenuating circumstances. Um, we can help with any accommodation issues that you may be having in terms of um, if there if there's an environment which is um, affecting your mental health, we can help to link you in with extra support, which can resolve that. Um, we can make referrals to other agencies such as counselling, um, the counselling team within Goldsmiths, but also um, counselling teams outside of the university. Um, we can link you in with the GP um, and help you to make GP appointments. Um, and we can link you into other teams within the university, such as uh, the disability team, academic departments, um, the student centre, any finance issues you're having, we can help um, kind of refer you over to the right support with that as well. Yeah. And is there anyone that students can contact if they're confused about how to access wellbeing services? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a few ways you can access wellbeing support. Um, all of our information is on the Goldsmiths website. So if you just type in well-being um, or well-being team, it will come up. You can um, email us. That's our main um, our main way of contact. So um, usually we would send you a referral form, which you fill in, um, and then we'll send you um, an, a form to book an appointment with us. Um, if you don't feel comfortable contacting us yourself, you can give consent to either um, a friend or maybe a staff member. So if there's someone within your um, academic department who maybe you feel most comfortable with, they can refer you to us as well. Um, but it's really important that if they are going to provide any of your personal information, such as your name or your student number, um, you need to give them consent to provide that. Um, but they're the main ways. Um, you can also email us. Our email is wellbeing at gold ac.uk hmm. and would you be able to tell us a bit more about why students are accessing well-being right now and whether there has been any kind of shift during the pandemic yeah so um obviously the pandemic has uh, required a lot of adjustment within everyone but especially with students um obviously there's a lot of online learning now which has been really difficult for a lot of people. Um, so a lot of students are requiring support around that for things such as um, motivation um, or maybe difficulties engaging with the online learning. Um, another um, kind of big issue that um, students are experiencing is isolation um, and social isolation, obviously due to the fact that we've now had three lockdowns. Um, mm -hmm. It's obviously having a big toll on a lot of our mental health um, so as a result, that's, um, that's meaning that a lot of students um, are requiring a bit of extra support around the mental health. Um, also physical health um, is quite a big one. Um, so we've been linking in a lot of students with the GP and following up um, with students who have experienced COVID-19 um, and also bereavement as well. Um, obviously that's quite well, particularly prevalent at the moment. Um, so linking in with bereavement support um, and additional support surrounding that. So, um, for example, within um, the academic departments and ensuring that there's adjustments in place for that as well. And could you maybe talk me through a typical session um, with a wellbeing advisor? Sure. So um, before the session, it's worth noting that we would decide between ourselves um, the means in which you want to have the session. So whether that's on Microsoft Teams, if that's the phone call. Um, so there's flexibility and adjustment around that and what you feel comfortable with. Um, at the start of the session, I would introduce myself. Um, we'd have a conversation around confidentiality. Um, and I would obviously reassure you that um, everything we talk about is confidential. Um, the only reason why I would have to share information is if you consent to a referral. Um, or if I have significant reason to believe that your safety or someone else's safety is at risk. 
Um, we would then usually go through your registration form. So a lot of the time before an appointment, we will ask you to fill out the registration form. That just asks for some information about your situation. It asks if there's any particular support that you're looking for, for example, counselling, um, but also if there's additional support as well. So we'd, um, we'd have a chat about that. Um, I'd ask you usually if you feel comfortable to kind of explain um, your situation at the moment and the areas that you would like support with. Um, so we'd discuss that. Um, I'd also mention the different support that we can link you in with. Um, and we'd have a conversation um, about whether you feel comfortable kind of initiating that support yourself or whether you'd like me to support with that and make some referrals. Um, so that's something that we do. We'd also discuss um, whether you would like a follow-up appointment um, or if you'd like regular check-ins. Um, if for any reason I had reason to believe that your safety might be at risk um, or if you feel as though you can't keep yourself safe, we'd usually make a stay and safe plan. Um, that's just a plan where we outline the steps that um, you need to take if you are feeling unsafe. Um, but we can also make a support plan as well, um, which just outlines um, the different support that we're going to put in place together for you. Um, so then at the end of the meeting, we'll agree on um, the follow up actions. So anything that I'm going to do, anything that you're going to do. Um, if we decide to have a follow up appointment, um, I can book you in at the, at the end of the appointment um, or I can send you a link to book in a time yourself when you feel comfortable. Um, and yeah, that, that's basically what happens. <laughs> That was a really good explanation, I think. Um, and what specific support can you offer for BME students at Goldsmiths? So um, the main support that we can offer is um, obviously we have the wellbeing team. Uh, we have a counselling team within the university as well. Um, and we have mental health advisors as well. Um, all of those teams have BME members of staff as well. So if BME students do feel more comfortable um, requesting a BME member of staff, that's definitely something that we can look into. Um, we also have additional support networks such as the chaplaincy. We have campus support officers who work overnight and they also work throughout the weekend. Um, and we can also make referrals to more specialist uh, BME, BME support agencies, um, such as specialist BME counselling, um, or um, support specific to the issues that the student is experiencing. And are all meetings online right now? And if they are, um, are you going to move them to in-person anytime soon? Um, so for now, the majority of the meetings are online. Um, there is some flexibility around that. So um, at, at present, um, we have a member of wellbeing staff in, um, in the university every day. So there's always someone on site. Um, so that means basically if a student needs to see someone face to face um, for whatever reason that may be, if they're in crisis or if they don't have access to um, internet or to a phone, um, then they can come in and we can um, arrange some flexibility around a face to face appointment. Uh, so there is flexibility around that, although we are primarily having um, sessions online. Um, we also offer phone calls as well, if that's preferred. Um, in terms of when everything may or may not go back to fully face to face, um, unfortunately, I can't really answer that simply because it's in line with the government guidance. So we're just kind of following that at the moment to see when it will be safe um, for things to become more face to face. But in terms of um, accessing a face-to-face -face appointment, if that's preferred, then students can indicate that to us and we will obviously do our best to try and implement that for them. Hmm. And we also have a student question today. Um, so this particular student is asking, I'm really struggling with my mental health right now. How can you help me? Um, so I think, First of all, I would really encourage them to book an appointment with the uh, wellbeing team. So they can just send us an email if they feel comfortable to do so. Or like I mentioned previously, they can um, 
maybe speak to a friend or a member of staff to refer them. Um, then we would arrange an appointment for as soon as possible. So we would um, send them a form to book in a slot for when they can make it. Um, we'd have a chat about their current situation. So the ways in which their mental health is affecting them, obviously it's very personal and um, affects everyone in different ways. So it's really important to hear from the student's perspective um, about the ways in which it is affecting them and the areas of their life that they might need support with. Um, and then depending on um, the support needs that they have, um, I could then refer them to extra support such as counselling, um, such as therapy in the NHS. Um, if they have more, um, more high support needs, um, we could refer them to more specialist mental, mental health support within um, the NHS. Um, we can also make them an um, emergency GP appointment if they need to speak to someone um, straight away, um, or we can make them a GP appointment for within the two week time frame if their needs aren't so immediate. Um, we can also contact the academic department. So um, I'm always happy to email the academic department if the student feels comfortable for me to do so, and um, particularly if they feel like they're behind with their work um, or if they'd like to arrange a meeting to discuss their progress um, or any extenuating circumstances that they can apply for, um, I can also help them to apply for that. Uh, we can discuss um, financial issues if that's something that they are struggling with. Um, if there's any issues with substance misuse, I can refer to that as well. Um, and then depending on um, where the student's at with their mental health, if they would like more regular support, um, I can arrange to check in with them regularly. And obviously if they have any questions or any queries, they can always email me and I'll um, usually try and get back to them on the same day or the next day. Um, our usual time frame at the wellbeing team is to respond within three working days, but uh, usually we'll try and get back to you before then. Um, and then we can also link in with, for example, campus support. So um, they work overnight and they work over the weekend. So um, we can arrange for check-in calls. Um, and we can also link in with um, crisis numbers and crisis teams if the student needs out of hours mental health support. Um, so they're probably the main areas that we would support with, but there's also a lot of flexibility. It kind of depends on uh, what the student specifically um, is experiencing and the kind of support that they need. But um, even if it's something different that we don't usually look, in, um, look into, then I'm happy to look into it and see if it's something that we can support with or we can link them in with. So there's definitely flexibility. And how has the support offered by the wellbeing services changed um, since the start of the pandemic? Um, so um, I guess obviously we're mostly online at the moment. Um, that's been a big change for a lot of people, for the students and also the staff members. Um, some students have actually preferred it, um, I guess, because they can attend the meeting from home. Um, although I'm sure some students would prefer face to face. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, that's something that we can facilitate if they would prefer. Um, so that's the main way in which it's changed. Um, I think other than that, um, in terms of the amount of students that we're supporting, um, we have seen a bit of a rise in the amount of students accessing wellbeing support and also being referred to counselling. Um, I think that's obviously related to the pandemic and the, um, the after effects and the ongoing um, consequences of the way in which it's impacted people's lives. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I think you know, there's a big rise in people feeling isolated. Um, so we have been offering, um, well, from my perspective anyway, I've been doing a lot of check-ins with students um, who I know are feeling isolated um, just to um, provide a bit of extra um, social support. Um, um, and a lot of the organisations and support available have adjusted as well. Um, so in, in some areas, there's been more support available because, um, because of COVID and a lot of COVID specific support has um, become available. Um, and then a lot of um, additional support have kind of changed the ways in which they operate. 
Um, so that's something that we've kind of had to adjust to as well. Hmm. Um, I've actually got a question that's not on the question list. That's um, fine. Uh, so yeah, could you maybe explain a little bit more about check-ins and how uh, well-being advisors keep in touch with students accessing the services? Yeah, definitely. Um, so depending on the student um, and I guess the, the level of support that they need, um, it does vary. Um, some students, um, I would kind of encourage them to um, get in touch whenever they need support and I'm happy to arrange a meeting or a phone call um, or we can just email if they prefer. And then for some students who prefer more um, regular support or regular check-ins, um, some of them I have arranged to have like a specific day and time that we um, meet every week. So usually that would just be on Teams. Um, we have a Teams meeting, but like it's not as formal as a meeting. It's more just a chat to um, check in and see how they're doing, see if anything needs following up um, or if anything's changed within their situation. Um, some students will um, email the wellbeing team directly, but also if um, if you have a particular wellbeing advisor that you usually speak with, you can always just email us directly as well. Um, we also sometimes will phone students to check in um, after their appointment just to see how they're doing and to see if they'd like another appointment. Um, or we can text you as well if that's preferred. I know some students don't like to talk on the phone as much, so um, we can also um, text as well. And is Wellbeing offering any type of financial support to students this year? Um, so all financial support is applied for through the advice team. Um, so for students who are requiring financial support, we can definitely advise you on um, the different funds and the um, scholarships and things that you can apply for, um, but it's not processed through us. So we don't, um, we don't accept the finance applications ourselves that's done by the advice team so we would kind of direct you to them who can um, help a bit more with the applications themselves um, but there are definitely um, fun there is definitely funding um, available to students who need it such as the hardship fund which um, it closes at the end of May um, but there are additional funds available as well throughout the year yeah, thank you all for watching um, this interview with me and me. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it and that we have answered some of your questions. Um, please feel free to get in touch with the wellbeing team or with the SU um, if you have any issues or problems or any additional questions that you would like us to clear up. Um, and yeah, do you have any final words, Neve? Uh, no, thank you for obviously having this interview. Um, it's been good to kind of reach out and um, hopefully encourage some students who maybe um, are feeling a bit apprehensive to access our support. Um, so yeah, if you if you are feeling like you need some extra support with your wellbeing, please do get in touch. Um, we'd be more than happy to support you, whatever your problem may be. Um, there's nothing too big or too small. Um, so yeah, please do let us know.